We've been using the Pentax equipment for the last 10 years here at UCH, basically because it was very good for laser therapy. One of the things that I noticed with the old K-series was that we had some slight colour variability. Uh, the overall images were good, uh, but the variability in the colour was there. Um, I enjoyed using them, uh, but I have to say that the new series, uh, the Highline series, has made a huge difference to our practice. I've been using the new Pentax Highline series now for about six months and the first thing I found immediately obvious was that the scopes handle much better than they used to. They're more sensitive, they're lighter uh, and they're more responsive. What I found was remarkable was the clarity of the new high definition images were reams ahead of any other scope that I've used and I found the mucosal visualisation really very exciting. Once I'd trialled it for a few months and adopted a certain key, a certain number of key settings, I found the scopes very user friendly. In particular I've been using the Pentax Highline system for Barrett surveillance and also the detection and management of uh, early gastric neoplasia. In the Barrett in the esophagus I found that uh, the visualization of the Barrett's mucosa is very, very clear, just simply using the basic high definition settings. Surveillance of Barrett's requires painstaking mucosal visualization in order to try and pick up any small areas of early neoplasia, which constitutes both high grade dysplasia and intramucosal cancer. And I found that uh, using the Highline system, the it, you are more likely, in my opinion, to detect these very small early cancers or small areas of high-grade dysplasia. And not only that, it's probably easier to demarcate and even classify them in terms of the surface architecture and pit pattern. So not only is it important to detect these lesions, it's important to try and define them. For example, if you have a fairly flat lesion, which you think is uh, not significant, then you would probably simply biopsy it. However, if you have a flat lesion where you think the, there's some irregularity, either in the tubular pattern of the uh, pits, or a change in the vasculature such that it becomes irregular, then you may suspect that uh, you may have a high grade or a uh, lesion or an early cancer. It's very important to know this because you then may decide to resect the lesion with a process called EMR. The number of settings available on the Highline system is huge and I found that after trialling several of the settings over six months that a combination of surface enhancement and contrast enhancement and tone enhancement created a truly fascinating image. I was very excited by the pathology that I'd never seen before with the old scopes, but were, was available to you as never before. So I could see the changes in the pit pattern within the Barrett's mucosa, and I could see the changes in the vasculature, which all means that the amount of pathology that, that can be detected and defined is far greater than it ever was before. I also have an interest in the detection and management of early gastric cancer. And in the past, I found that I used to have to dye spray the entire gastric mucosa painstakingly in order to pick up and define and characterize some of these lesions. However, with the new Highline system, I found with the combination of contrast enhancement, surface enhancement, and tone enhancement, that these lesions are readily viewable without the need of dye and also it's I'm able now to define the edges so to to demarcate these lesions which is very important prior to endoscopic submucosal dissection and resection of these lesions so in my own practice I normally start the endoscopy without any settings just simply using the high definition 
Once I have gained an overview of the Barrett's mucosa and the gastric mucosa and the duodenal mucosa to identify any obvious lesions, I then switch to uh, a tone enhancement and a surface enhancement. And then I stay on these settings to hopefully increase my rate of detection of lesions, but once I've found them to characterize, to characterize. And this, again, can be done without any dye spray and allows very clear characterization of these lesions and very clear demarcation. Over my last six months' experience, I found that the Highline system has really opened up a world of images and possible pathology. I'm still finding my way, however, I feel that my detection of early mucosal neoplasia has improved, and certainly my um, understanding and characterization of these lesions is better than it ever has been. The big difference we've noticed over the last six months since we've been using the High Line is the quality of the images is just so much sharper. Uh, the presence of true high definition together with the surface tone and contrast enhancements has made it very much easier for us to see early lesions and of course a lot of our work is an, around detecting and treating dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus. So detecting the early lesions and characterising them is actually very important to us. Over the years our colleagues around uh, in, uh, around other research centres have criticised the lack of endoscopic mucosal resections that we've done uh, and have argued that that's because we don't have as good vision as they have uh, for early lesions. Uh, as many people will know, we've been focusing on photodynamic therapy. What's very interesting is in the last few months, uh, the number of endoscopic mucosal resections we've been doing has gone up quite considerably because we're actually able to see rather more lesions than we used to. There's been quite a lot of research in the last few years about uh, improving the detection of dysplasia uh, and it's been shown by a number of groups that using zoom endoscopy one can detect very clearly different types of pit patterns in Barrett's mucosa which helps define whether there's dysplasia or not. What we found we're using the Highline series that actually one doesn't need to use the zoom. There is a zoom functionality, but actually you can see so well without it with these 1.3 megapixel scopes uh, that really it's just simply not necessary. Uh, and I found that a huge boon to our practice. When I uh, see a new patient who's been referred with suspected dysplasia and Barrett's, uh, the first thing to do is to look and see whether I can detect the abnormality. Now, in about 50% of patients, it's not detectable. Uh, and using our old Pentax system, or indeed other scopes that we had, uh, I used to find, in fact, that it was rather higher than 50%. We simply couldn't see a lesion. Using the Highline system, uh, that number has now fallen to well below 50%, where we can't detect a lesion, because uh, the high definition, the true high definition, uh, together with the surface enhancement, allows one to pick out very easily changes in mucosal patterns, uh, which we simply didn't see before. At UCH, we have a bowel cancer screening service uh, and we are of course very concerned about the quality of our detection of colonic polyps. We did an in-service evaluation over a period of a few months uh, looking at the new Pentax Highline colonoscopes uh, and the questions that were raised were whether the Pentax Highline series uh, was more difficult to use and therefore would have a lower sequel intubation rate or indeed more patient discomfort and the other question of course was whether we could detect the same number or more polyps than using our other system. We uh, analysed data from, uh, in fact, almost 300 colon colonoscopies done by our colonoscopists here at UCH in the bowel cancer screening, and we found that the sequel intubation rate with either type of scope was more than 95%. 
We also found that the time to sequel intubation was exactly the same with the Pentax Highline as with our other scopes. Uh, and furthermore, although there was indeed a slight increase in discomfort in patients, this was only minimal and did not require uh, any more uh, sedation or pain relief. But I think the most important finding was that for polyp detection, the Highline series uh, detected far more polyps than using our conventional colonoscopes. In fact, we detected on average 60% more polyps, uh, and these polyps were the same size and of the same histology uh, as we would have expected with our other scopes. In other words, there's a true increase in detection rates. There's a caveat to that study, which is that it is a small single centre analysis uh, with only a very small number of colonoscopists, and before we can generalise these data, we're very keen to do a prospective multi-centre study, which we're currently uh, in the process of organising. I'd like to talk about a case of a 70-year-old gentleman who was referred to our unit for management of high-grade dysplasia within Barrett's mucosa. When we first looked down, it wasn't initially clear that there are any lesions at all. And uh, for all intents and purposes, this gentleman had a standard Barrett's mucosa with intestinal uh, metaplasia only. However, having change the settings to surface contrast and tone enhancement, it became very clear that there was an area within the Barrett's mucosa where the glandular pattern, which is normally tubular within Barrett's, had become irregular. So the surface, the grooves within the surface and the, tub the tubular pattern of the mucosa had become irregular and distorted. Not only that, the vascular pattern had become more enhanced, but also was distorted and irregular. And we resected the lesion, which measured about six or seven millimetres, and was very slightly raised. Uh, although, again, when we first went in, it wasn't clear that it was raised. However, having changed the surface enhancement, it became clear that this was a very slightly raised lesion. And after EMR, we completely resected the lesion. And uh, there were foci of carcinoma as well as high-grade dysplasia. And it was eventually classified as an intramucosal carcinoma. So I'd like to tell you about a patient who came to us for evaluation of dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus. Uh, this is something we see very frequently. Uh, and in the past, we've often had difficulty detecting uh, these lesions. Uh, on this occasion, the patient had a high-definition endoscopy with the Highline Pentax scope. And initially, the area of the dysplasia within the Barrett segment was not particularly apparent. When we switched on the surface enhancement, uh, we immediately saw the edges of this lesion uh, jump out at us. Um, and the, the whole lesion became much more obvious to us than it had been previously, even though in retrospect it was pretty obvious that it was there, it's just our eye had not been drawn to it. Uh, and then when we turned on the tone enhancement, the lesion became very much clearer and much more sharply defined uh, this is by a post-processing change in the uh, coloration, um, but the, the, whole, the whole effect was to make it very much more obvious where the lesion was so that we could then decide uh, how big an endoscopic mucosal resection to perform for this patient. And this, of course, then allowed us 
to decide whether we were going to go on and perform ablative therapy at a later stage. The next is a case of a gentleman with Barrett's mucosa, but what I wanted to point out on this case was how the Pentax High Line can define the difference between the Barrett's mucosa and the cardia and gastric fundal mucosa. If you have a look at the first image, you can see that the pit pattern or the glandular pattern within the stomach appears to be oval insofar as there are lots of points and uh, as we switch from the high line uh, standard high definition to increase contrast and increase surface enhancement and eventually increase in the tone enhancement uh, to a C setting you can see that this glandular pattern becomes far more obvious. Now, when you compare this to the Barrett's mucosa, you can see that the Barrett's mucosa is slightly tubular. This is not that clear on the standard high definition. However, you can make it out with, with a, 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 the naked eye. But as you switch on the surface and contrast enhancement, it becomes increasingly more obvious. And then once you switch on the tone enhancement, to see setting, you can see that the tubules, the grooves, the lines, the wavy lines become very clear. And this is very, this is obviously uh, a um, Barrett's um, mucosal pit pattern in keeping with intestinal metaplasia. This next case is the case of a 55-year-old gentleman who was referred to our unit with what was felt to be a early gastric cancer. And um, it is initially identified as a very small ulcer just at the cardia. And the patient was put on acid suppression and the ulcer healed. However, biopsies demonstrated an error of high-grade dysplasia. Now, as you see with the first image, you can see that the pit pattern is not that typical of a gastric pit pattern. It's more glandular, it's more tubular, there are, there are ridges and there are grooves. And also there's some distortion. And you can see where the glandular pattern becomes a little bit irregular. And also you can make out that there's some ulceration. And this becomes far more clear as the high definition is changed from uh, um, uh, standard high definition to high definition with surface enhancement, contrast enhancement, and tone enhancement. And then the pictures become far more clear. When biopsies were taken of this area, there was widespread high-grade dysplasia with carcinoma amounting to a final diagnosis of intramucosal carcinoma.